Welcome to Park Place Lanes in week two of Stars and Strikes Doubles here on The Winds. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And uh, last week, if you missed our show premiere here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, had a pretty good match as uh, Pat Pay and Reggie DeLime were able to get the victory and uh, move on this week to try and make it two in a row. Well, they just jumped out to that 40-pin lead and kind of rode it right to the end. Uh, got a little scary toward the end of that third game, but uh, not really in doubt. Once again, the uh, the strategies of, of playing doubles, uh, it is a long rest uh, in this scotch format. You bowl two boxes and then you sit down while six other boxes are bowled. That's a, that's a, really a long time even for these guys to sit down, and they're used to, to different types of tournament situations. That's right. Sometimes that takes its toll, and usually, as a, as a rule of thumb, the, the any kind of doubles, mixed doubles, men's doubles, the scores are usually a little lower. That's why I was very surprised at the first two games of uh, Reggie and Pat last week. But uh, we can throw those scores out, new week, new team, and uh, these teams actually tied in the roll-off, so it should be interesting. Yeah, that's right. That's, uh, let's meet them, and we'll explain that a little further. First of all, our number four seeded team, uh, we just spoke about their victory last week from Summersworth, New Hampshire, Pat Pay, and from Needham, Massachusetts, Reggie DeLine. Okay, and Pat Pay comes in averaging 129, and Reggie 125. Their roll-off scores, respectively, 652 and 637. But, as Dan mentioned, uh, Pat and Reggie were ended up uh, ended up in a tie at 1,289, their combined roll-off scores uh, when they were added up and then compared with the roll-off scores of our third-seeded team, Don Weatherby and John Mafio, they ended up in a tie and they had to roll a one-string roll-off to settle this thing and that was a heck of a match in and of itself. Uh, we almost wish we could have shown that to you as well, but let's uh, now officially meet our number three-seeded team as a result of winning that one-string roll-off. Don Weatherby from Concord, New Hampshire, and John Maffio from Goffstown. Okay, and uh, Don comes in averaging 116, and John Maffio uh, 125, their respective roll-off scores, 649 and 640. Again, uh, just like the Stars and Strikes original show, we will have a Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions in the spring, so obviously one of these teams hopes to work its way up the ladder and uh, qualify to be our first team into the Tournament of Champions. We'll tell you more about today's show and about the show in general, in case you missed it last week, and we'll get our match started, too, for the first of three strings. We'll get it started right after these words. Don't go away. We'll be getting our match started in just a moment, but uh, first of all, a look at uh, how we got to this point. Last week, if you missed it, in our premiere show, Joe Ashline and Dave Richards fell to Pat Pay and Reggie DeLine, so this week they take on Don Weatherby and John Maffio, and you see the lineup uh, in the weeks to come, Steve, uh, uh, rather Wayne Denon and Steve Plant, and then in the number one spot, Gary Carrington, and Jack Ray. But right now, Pat Pay is all set on lane 32, and we get this match started as this team looks for its second straight win. And Pat Pay certainly is no stranger to winning here on the wins. Last week was his 22nd win. 22nd win on the wins. <laughs> That's pretty good. 10 in the first. And on the head pin that time, and he leaves a solid six pin. And he's going to have a clear shot at that six. Waiting for the wood to settle down a bit. Oh, he pulled it to the left. I think Pat knew it as soon as he released the ball. And it's a nine. So a 19 opening pair for the team of Pat Pay and Reggie DeLine. And our team of Weatherby and Maffio has selected John Maffio to get things started. Again, the teams have their choice as far as who starts the match. And then they can either keep the same order throughout the match or they can change the order starting the third game to see who will bowl the extra two games. One, two, nine, ten left for John. Two boxes, rather, not two games. <laughs> we don't bowl two extra games. John has been with us uh, a number of times on the single show on Stars and Strikes. Gordon, are you going to say it or am I? Everybody seems to like the bowl against John. <laughs> John <laughs> has had some big scores thrown against him. <laughs> Five, seven left for John. 
Remember, these two teams, as Doug mentioned at the beginning of the show, tied, and we had a one-string roll-off prior to last week's show. And of course, there's a big spare. And Don Weatherby and John Mafio beat Reggie and Pat. There's a replay of that spare. 155 to 152, and right down to the final ball. Reggie DeLine now. He's going to be thinking about his partner. His partner just missed the six pin for a spare. Now Reggie's got a one all by itself up there. And he's going to cover. First mark for the team of Pay and DeLine. They worked very efficiently as a team last week. They had 16 spares, no strikes, but they each had eight spares. Perfectly divided. Eight and the three nine left. These are the two pins that you take out when you leave the half whister to the right. Difficult shot when they're by themselves. Got to go flush on the three pin, drive it straight back or come off the wall. And you're wondering why you got the nine pin. Well, it actually was off the spot a little bit to the left. And now we'll get our first look ever at Don Weatherby making his first appearance with us. And Don drops all but the five. Not a bad start. First ball ever in front of the lights. Everything but the five pin. This will be a confidence builder for him and for the team. And he's right on top of it. There's nine, a steal. Nine drops spare as he filled that mark left by his partner. If the name sounds a little familiar, Don's brother Jim as he strikes on spare. Don's brother Jim has been with us uh, before, but this is Don's first That's appearance. That's right, this is Jim's uh, younger brother. Three marks in a row for the team. And Pat Pay. Of course, Don, uh, is my manager. He works at Botwell's Bowling Center as our Steve Birch and myself's manager. So we gave him the keys last night. He bowled all night long practicing. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, folks. Just makes, kidding. Makes it sound like you're a fighter. He's your manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When's your next bout? <laughs> at Botwell's? <laughs> Ooh. Pat was trying to cap that piece of wood, clear out the five and the seven. Well, that's what he was going for. It wasn't quite there anyway. Joe Paglia is working the lob line and handling the pin deck chores for us today. And Shannon Murphy is working the big scoreboard here off camera for the folks here at Park Place Lanes, as well as the bowlers themselves. Uh, nepotism has reared its ugly head <laughs> here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. <laughs> nice shot by Pat. Two, four, and 10. So they continue with the spare theme. They got two more here in this one. John working on a strike and a string of three marks in a row. That's a good looking ball. Everything but the 10. Shannon is Dan's daughter and uh, working, us, working with us here on the big scoreboard. We see Don bowled all night practicing, then he brought his own score. <laughs> <laughs> John Mafia waiting for that wood to just settle. I don't think it's going to be a factor in the shot as he looks at the 10 pin. Of course, Shannon is only mm. six years old. She's a real smart kid. That's why she's <laughs> keeping the score. I don't want to give away my age here. <laughs> 77 at the halfway point for the team of Weatherby and Mafio. Trying to start a streak of their own and end Pat Pays and Reggie DeLine's streak at one. Defeated Joe Ashline and Dave Richards last week. That match was 382, 387-372. And John can't quite get the conversion as he leaves the seven. But his team has the lead through six, 87. Now Reggie DeLine comes up working on that spare left by his partner, Pat Pay. The uh, operating theory here, I guess, being very similar to uh, kind of an alternating shot type situation in golf, where 
scramble you know, type. Somebody yeah. makes a shot or leaves a mark in this case, and then your partner has to pick up where you left off. It can yeah. be. It can be. I suppose more nerve-wracking as golf can be in a team situation, more nerve-wracking than competing just for yourself because you're, you know. You, you and I know that, Doc, huh? <laughs> if people are looking for a, a, a foursome or need two other guys, we're your guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you hit anything in the woods, Doug and I will be there looking for hours anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> Four horsemen right, one, three, six, and ten. But we know how to pick our partners, don't we, Doug? That's for sure. That's right. Spare in the eighth. And you see, just splitting the one three would help them on the six and ten. Don Weatherby back up. Back on the head pin again. Triangle. Two, four, five. Oops, mm. right there. Just a little heavy on the two pin. I suppose we should explain that a little bit. Uh, those of you who are golf fans are probably aware that. Uh, WNDS holds a benefit golf tournament every year to uh, raise money for New Hampshire Special Olympics. And Dan and I were fortunate enough to, uh, to participate in this year's tournament. And uh, in our foursome were Cheryl Young and Jeff Twiss from the Boston Celtics. And uh, we had a heck of a time. We finished fourth. We, we gave it a run. We did. We were right there. Good cause and lots of fun. I understand that's an annual type thing too, that's so it. people should look for it next year and put your own team in. Be a lot of fun. That was also the high point of my golfing summer. It was all downhill after that. <laughs> Believe me, just because Doug and I are playing, don't stay away. It's all the more reason <laughs> to join the tournament. If you just want a good laugh, you should come. <laughs> Pat Pay working on a spare, trying to cut into that 13 pin lead, and he does by seven. Five, seven, and nine. Got a shot at it. Mm. Ball up and over, deflected up and over the seven pin. The runner up team in this match will pick up $200. They will split $200 in prize money. And the winners will move on. All right, all of them. All of them. To face Wayne Denon and Steve Plant next week. And make it a 10 for Pat and a 121. John Mafio now for his final two. In game one, and he kicks out the three and the one. Actually came forward too, the three into the head pin. Leaves himself just a seven. Cover this for a spare, and he does. Right on it. Missed the 10 pin earlier, but gets the seven pin this time. Four marks for the team. Right back in the pocket, this time knocking down eight, gives him 125 in the ninth. Chance for this one to really boost the lead. He does. Bear in the 10th. John works for Nuclear Metals Incorporated as a purchasing agent. He and his wife, Janet, have three children, John the third, Michelle, and Paul. They live in Goffstown, New Hampshire. John, as I mentioned, has been with us on several previous occasions on the singles show, and he gets a seven fill in the 10th for a 142. And so the team of John Maffio and Don Weatherby leads by 21 after one. We'll be back with game two in a moment. Don Weatherby to start game two. Carrying a 21 pin advantage. 
Oh, hang on. <laughs> right through the middle. Well, last week it was Pat Payne, Reggie DeLine jumping out to a quick lead, and this week they find themselves on the other end of the spectrum and down by 21. Long ways to go. Good ball there for Dom Weatherby, but he leaves the 10 pin now. The question is, is that wood legal or not? Looks uh, like it'll be close. Uh, although it actually I looks like it won't be close. No, it's <laughs> it still moving. Sh should be out. Joe Paglia eyeing it carefully. He's confident that it's not going to move back, and it is out. Remember, that, uh, that Deadwood line, you can't really see it on the lane, but uh, if any part of the wood is touching that Deadwood line coming away from the pin plate, then you remove it. Good hand for Joe coming back. He just gives him an old hand wave like, ah, nothing to it. <laughs> Spare in a second. Makes it a little tougher after you have to wait. <laughs> exactly. Like that. And that's not the easiest pin for a right-hander to hit, that 10 pin. Reggie off target a little bit. One, three, six on the right with the four, seven. Piece of wood in behind the head pin in between the one and the four, so it should help in the four, seven. <laughs> Actually went right around that piece of wood, never even came into play. Left just the seven pin. Make it a 10. So it reduces the lead to 18. However, he's got a match of spare already put up by the team of Weatherby and Mafia. And Reggie's got it. Spare in the second. So the spares continue for the team of Pay and DeLine. That's their fourth this week. They had 16 a week ago. Wow, no doubt about that one. It was just a matter of time before they all went. He just buried that ball in the 1-3 pocket. Just the 4-7, where are they going to go or not? There goes the 4 and finally the 7, and he's making a count. That was on a spare. This time through the middle. I'm sure he'll go after the three, six, and ten, and hopefully he can catch a little bit of that wood also to slide across into the four, eight, and oh, just like that. Before yeah. I can get it out of <laughs> the words out of my mouth, he's converted as a spare, and let's just watch it. That's a pretty one. He figured it'd be easier to do it than to have you explain That's right. it. That's right. It'll take me a day and a half to describe <laughs> all the pins up there, so well, John says, I'll save you the trouble, Dan. Pat Pay, this is filling the spare left by Reggie DeLine with six. And right now, they just got to weather this storm and stay with them. They don't want to fall too much further behind. Mm. Just off to the right. And off to the right again. Looks like he stumbled a little bit on the approach that time. Lost his balance a little bit. And coming back to take out the three and the head pin, but this leaves <laughs> yeah, the I back row. Probably would like to have seen the head pin stay up. However, let's see where the wood settles down. Yeah. There are three pieces of wood down there. Yeah, I almost go to the left of the red line and have the move wood start moving. I got to move further. Well, he got a break. Come back. I thought he had to go a little further left, but it was enough for the ball to come back. Each team with a spare up in the fourth, and we'll take a little break here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Don't go away, though. We're coming right back with game two. Well, each team has a spare up in the fourth. Dom Weatherby's team leading in the match. Light hit. Let's see what happens. Still falling. Same leave Pat just had a moment ago. Well, this time, there's no doubt. Well, I shouldn't say that. I think he's going to go after the seven pin and the two pieces of wood, right where they form a V. Didn't catch quite enough of the right-hand piece. That was the idea. Tried by Don. 
periodically I try to mention some of the people who come up to me and mention that they watch the show quite often. There's a couple from Epson, New Hampshire I'd like to mention in just a few minutes. Watch the show every week. This show too, every week? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think they watched last week. <laughs> Right, you get two hours of can open bowling right here on the winds. I'd be anxious to hear some of the comments of a, a new show, a double show. Yeah, in fact, we're going to uh, invite you to write us with comments, as always, and we'll give you that address a little bit later on. Don has to settle for a seven in the sixth, so a couple of open frames, and Reggie DeLine comes up working on a spare, so maybe he senses an opening here. Ooh, snaps that one right through the middle for the spread eagle. Joan and Harvey Sampson. Say hi to Joan and Harvey from Epsom, New Hampshire. They watch uh, regular Canopin Stars and Strikes, and I'm sure they're now an avid viewer of Canopin Doubles. So say hi to Harvey and Joan Sampson from Epsom, New Hampshire. And it's a nine box for Reg, 56 through Five, and it's a 38-pin advantage right now for Weatherby and Mafio. There's a big strike. Well, Reggie's wondering what would have happened if he had somehow been able to get a spare in that mark before, in that box before he almost converted the spread eagle a moment ago. That's the first strike for the team of Pay and DeLine in two weeks. That's an interesting leave. A smaller version of what he just had. Not quite. John Matthew does a lot of his bowling at the King Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. Yes, I really should mention that because uh, Dan Lorshell and his father Bob Lorshell, the proprietors of King Lanes, were here watching some of the taping. And he knew that Don was from Botwell, so he said, oh, let's give us equal time, huh? King's <laughs> <laughs> Will it go? No, the eight pin stays. Actually, the wood killed that shot, deflected the ball to the left side wall prematurely instead of driving through. And probably cost it the eight pin from going down. Tens, and another opening. This time, Pat Pay will step up working on a strike. That looked like he had a little more speed in that ball. I think he was thinking double strike. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one, the three, and the seven pin with a piece of wood that's rolling well. Let's see where it's going to settle down. Right in behind the one and the three. <laughs> well, or maybe not. <laughs> halfway in between. I think Pat would like it right about there. Got to hurry. Not quite getting there. Nine box for Pat. So the total lead now, as you see in the bottom left, 27. They had 21 pins coming in. Pat trying to put up a mark here so that it can, they can at least nose out in front in this game. Not going to be an easy shot because of the angle of that wood. He's got the 247. The two pin is going to fly right to the sidewall if he hits it flush. Well, it's enough to carry through. Nicely done. What are you talking about, Dan? <laughs> Didn't look that difficult. Not for Pat, anyway. No. That was a big mark in the eighth. Don Weatherby for the final two for his team. Right in the pocket, and somehow the four pin remains standing. We always talk about the rating system in all the New Hampshire Canopin houses. And the rating system is based on, I, I guess, the difficulty of the lanes. Some lanes are faster than others. Park Place lanes has been 
duly noted, and be one of the higher scoring houses. Don Weatherby comes in averaging 116 out of Boutwell's lanes, and in the rating system, we add four pins to our averages coming down to Park Place. So it uh, gives you an idea that possibly Don Weatherby bowling at Park Place might be around 120. Easy to do with people coming from New Hampshire houses, but we got a lot like Reggie coming from the Massachusetts house, which they don't have such a system yet. But it's uh, kind of interesting. That's like rating golf courses. Now, how many, you must use, what, hundreds of scores to yes, come up with uh, those? Exactly. We, we use the state tournament scores over the past 10 years, dropping off uh, the previous five. So we, you know, we started out with about eight years of scores and drop off the, the furthest one, the oldest one. Again, Don is faced with a difficult spare chance here. He's got the two, the five, and the eight, but the wood in front could be a problem. Just Whoa. carried it. That's a pretty good shot. He just was able to get by the front piece and catch enough of the two pin. I actually caught the wood, which nudged the two pin down. Spare in the 10th. Just missing the head pin. It'll be a six fill and a 126 for the team of Weatherby and Mafio for 268, two string total. Now, as Reggie DeLine comes up here in the eighth, he's working, or on the ninth, he's working on a spare left in the eighth by his partner. Again, comes back in flush on the head pin. Drops seven on the spare, and let's see. Possibilities here. Glancing the, well, I should stop before saying too much more until I see where that wood settles down. It's getting worse by the minute. To go after the two and try to split it. Mm. That wood was up further. He could have glanced the ball off that, have the wood take the seven pin and the ball take the other two, but it didn't happen. And he heard Pat Pay in the background. You gotta have one here is his right. The lead has dropped to twenty. However, they're opposite of spare six. That oh. Flush on the head pin didn't trip the six pin. Two, four, six left. Nope. So the lead for Don Weatherby and John Mafio going into our third and final game will be 27 pins. 268 for Weatherby and Mafio, 241 for Pay and the line. And we'll be back with game three on Stars and Strikes doubles in a minute. And Pat Pay now will get our third game started here as we finish up week two. Pat Pay and Reggie DeLine trying to come from 27 pins down for their second straight win. And that seven pin slides right over to the right of the four pin. And so this is a very difficult leave now. It would have been anyway. Watch out, though. Look, and look what's left standing. <laughs> the pin he slid over. So. Of course, we can now speculate whether that would have gone down had it been on its right spot. Right. <laughs> but in any event, it's a 10 box for Pat. Lead is 27, as Doug said. One game to go. All of a sudden, uh, Dan, Pat really seems to be turning the ball over and, and going left of the head pin a lot. Well, I thought he had sped the ball up a little bit, throwing a little harder, and that has a tendency to want to pull the ball to the left if you start doing that. Mm -hmm. Personally, here at Park Place Lanes, I would want to, well, I guess within reason, I want to say I throw the ball as slow as I can, but I would <coughs> at least want to slow the ball down to where I felt I was still as accurate as I could be, because the longer you let the pin stay on the plate here, the bigger the scores can be. John Maffio right in the pocket, and look at what he gets for a leave. The 8-10. That's tough to do even with a bad hit, <laughs> let alone with a good hit. Now, let's see where the wood settles down. He could cap that and have the pin take one of those standing and the ball take the other. But anytime you cap a piece of wood, you really you're, you have a tendency to know what you want to do with it, but whether it's going to cooperate is another thing. Well. There it will stop, apparently, just to the left of the eight pin. Yeah, his only shot is to play it and hope he gets off sidewall action. Uh, missed it entirely. Just got the eight pin. Now he's going to go after the ten. Ten pin for the ten box. These two teams decided to keep the order in which they were bowling 
for this third game. Of course, the teams have the option to switch the order if they prefer. And there, everything but the 10-pin. Piece of wood in front of it, but it's rolling way out in front. Anytime that happens, it's dangerous. Now it's rolling back. Here's that it, well, doesn't want to stop moving, and John wants to throw. It doesn't appear that it'll be a problem because it's fairly straight. So he converts it for the spare. It's like a thoroughbred racehorse there at the gate. He just huh. wanted, to, wanted to throw that ball. Got to wait till the gate opens <laughs> or the wood stops. That was the 10th mark for the team of Weatherby and Maffio. Reggie DeLine now getting a nice kick off the sidewall, missing the head pin, but he's left with a spare leave. And at this point in the game, they can't afford to miss too many of these legitimate spare leaves. And Reggie covers that one nicely, one in the three. Spare in the third. Now the fill. And, and it's a big one, the do nine. much better than that. And now a testy single pin. I really thought that four pin was gonna carry it first and nothing touched it. Got a row just missing to the left, and Reggie gave a little extra body angle. She knew it was going to be close. And it's a nine box. So a good chance there of getting two marks in a row. Don Witherby working on a spare. And he's full. Five, Phil. Don Weatherby from Concord. What does Don Weatherby look like? Add about another foot taller. Larry, Larry Bird. Sure. Mm -hmm. Everybody that comes in Botwell's bowling center is. Uh, I talked to the fellow that, uh, what's his name? He looks like Larry Bird. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, Donnie's uh, license plate is WeB33. That's his license right? plate, yeah. yeah. He's a big Celtic fan. Say the least. That could work well for Don. Uh, you get a nice table at a restaurant. Or <laughs> <laughs> it's tough walking around with those stilts, though. <laughs> you gotta be kind of clumsy, you know. Everything but the six pin, actually the three pin for Don. Piece of wood next to it. He, whoops! He was worried about capping it. Pull the ball to the left. So they're gonna lose some of the lead, but still manage a pretty comfortable lead. It'll be 24, the lead for Weatherby and Mafia with six frames remaining here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, week two of our opening series. We'll be right back. Six boxes to go and time running out a bit for Pat Pay and Reggie DeLine. 24 pins, that's like three marks behind your opponents. They have six frames remaining. That's three more than your opponent, so. Can't waste too much time. And There's Pat one. Doesn't. That's a tough shot right there, especially when looks, you've got to have marks. It looks like the, uh, actually the nine pin was going to be left, and then off the sidewall comes some help. Oh, boy. Wow. Boy. We saw Joe Ashline do that. Exactly the last same week. two pins. Yep. One in the nine. And his was on a spare also. Oh, oh what, a re out. what a recovery. <laughs> wow, that would have been a terrific shot. Looks like Joe Paglia is going to get a little more work here as there's a piece of wood coming out. Although maybe now it's going to roll back in play. Let's see. Joe says, go ahead. <laughs> there is room to get by, but may try and play the wood anyway. Mm. So a good opportunity in those last four boxes to cut into the lead. Reggie DeLine missed a single there in the fourth and then uh, unfortunately got a spare in the fifth, but Pat was only able to put two on it. Not that he wasn't trying because he was on the head pin. And the seven pin with all kinds of help. A reminder that our participating sponsor for this first series on Stars and Strikes Doubles, the folks from Somerville Lumber, where you can get it right the first time. Appreciate their support. 
all of our bowlers, uh, as on Stars and Strikes, here on the double show, will receive a plaque from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden, Massachusetts. Thanks, as always, to Norm Norcross and his fine staff of folks down there for their continued support of Stars and Strikes. They've been with us since the very beginning, almost eight years ago. That was a break. See that six pin falling back into the three and then the four pin went out of there. Joe went down just to check that double wood, but it is in play. He's a pretty thorough guy, isn't he? He really is. He's not taking anything for granted here. And John... And now he'll have to go down because we have a piece of wood out on the lane. <laughs> So he should have just stayed there. <laughs> Two marks for uh, for John Mafio, and those marks could make things quite difficult for the team of Pat Pay and Reggie DeLine because that lead will balloon up over 30 pins with the fill on that mark. Absolutely right. Another good hand for Joe coming back. That close to a strike. Everything scrambled around that five pin. Nothing really even touched it. Well, we talked last week about how Pat, Pay, and Reggie had a lot of spares but no strikes. And of course, now in a situation where they're trailing, they really need some strikes. And really can't afford to miss the spares. And that's what they're doing right now. Reggie missed two singles now in the last four boxes. Well, he'll shoot in another. This time the five and the nine. Just about a must. Gotta hurry. Seems to be missing to the right most of the time too. And he walks toward the left hand side of the approach when he releases. 87 through eight. Don Weatherby up for the seventh and eighth, but he's working on a spear put up by his partner, John Maffio in the sixth. Big ball. Hang on. It'll be an eight, Phil. That makes the lead an even 40. And he's looking at the one and the nine. Piece of wood there, as you can see. His object is to hit the head pin. Well, we've had a lot of interesting wood configurations <laughs> in this show. We've had to wait for spinning pieces and so forth. And Don cut that very nicely, but... Wasn't able to take out the nine pin. Ninety through seven. And the lead is, like Doug says, an even forty. Standing by next week to take on the winners of this match, our number two seeded team, Wayne Denon and Steve Plant, neither of whom has uh, been with us on Stars and Strikes. So they'll be making their first TV appearances with us. And don't forget, in two weeks, our number one seeded team, Gary Carrington and Jack Ray. How's that for a team? <laughs> they certainly have the uh, name recognition. Don Weatherby on the 10 pin. And he has finished his work for the day. Well, Pat's thinking strikes. Whew, well, and he almost got one on the what? back door. Hang on. He may still get one. Nope. Missed the head pin, but a nine drop. Well, Ooh. that's the kind of a day it is this time around for Pat and Reggie. Don't see Pat do that very often. Another nine drop. I'd say once you missed a few of them, your confidence level drops to a point where those things are a uh, point where they're blurry down the other end. <laughs> 106 and a 347 three-string total for Pat Pay and Reggie DeLine. 
They won't be able to make it two in a row. It's already in the books for John Maffio up at the line now and his partner Don Weatherby. They will move on to semifinal week next week against Wayne Denon and Steve Plant. 3 6 10 on the right with the seven pin angle of the wood. The ball is going to carry him off that piece of wood, and whether or not it will stay in play for the seven pin, uh, well, let's see what's, what's going to happen. Uh, up and over, but yes. he's got the wood come across. That's mark number 13 for the team of Mafio and Weatherby. Watch the ball fly. I thought maybe the ball would stay in play. That's gone, but he gets a lot of help from the right side kicks back across the lanes, and again, good break off the head pin. Eight pin drop, 118 through nine. Gonna have a real respectable three string total. Mark it up again. And in fact, this fill should take them over 400. That's 118 through nine. Computer won't add that ninth frame until we complete the 10th. A 400 triple for the team of John Maffio and Don Weatherby, and they advance with a 135 final string, a 403, as they knock off Pat Pay and Reggie DeLine, and we'll be back on Stars and Strikes Doubles in a minute. Welcome back to Stars and Strikes Doubles. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. We'll bring Dan in in just a second as we look ahead toward next week. But first of all, let's meet all of our bowlers. First of all, let's bring up Pat Pay and Reggie DeLine. Some applause for them as... Uh, they got that first win last week, but uh, the magic wasn't quite there the second time around. So for, uh, for Pat and Reggie, we have uh, $200 for you to split uh, as your fourth place uh, prize money. And, uh, well, Pat, you, you've been here enough times. You know sometimes they happen and sometimes they don't. And this was one of those days. Yeah, last week we got all the extra, and this week they did, and we missed too many marks together. I guess there's nothing more you can do to explain it, right, Reggie? It's just sometimes it is there and sometimes it isn't. That's right. They were throwing the marks, and uh, we were missing us. So that's the way it goes, you know. Well, we hope to uh, to see both of you again, uh, either on this show or on the other one uh, during the course of the year. Congratulations uh, for getting to this point, and we'll see you again real soon. Thanks very much, Pat, and thank you, Reggie. All right. Now let's uh, now let's bring up our winning bowlers for this show, Don Weatherby and John Maffio, getting their first win, and not only that, but posting a 403 triple. Nice job, John and Don. Uh, turn toward the camera here so we can see it. Just slide right in, and. Uh, well, you, you guys worked uh, pretty well together there as a team for this one. Yeah, we're happy to start the year with a win. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you get uh, you get to look forward to next week. Uh, you're going to have uh, Wayne Denon and Steve Plant uh, as your opponents. Do you know anything about them? No, I myself don't. So now you get a chance to uh, to maybe get that first win out of the way. Now get hopefully going toward the second one. Hey, we're happy. We'll just keep coming back if we don't. <laughs> don't worry about it. It, it did kind of uh, it was kind of a strange match though. If if it's possible to roll like a quiet. 400. That's what it seems like you guys did. Yeah, that's what I'm best at. Quiet, big scores. <laughs> well, we'll see both of you guys next week as you look for two in a row. Congratulations, John, and to Don. We'll see you next week. And uh, now let's look ahead and, uh, and see what exactly is going to be happening in the two weeks ahead for this uh, latter series. As uh, we mentioned, Don Weatherby and John Maffio getting that one win, and Dan Murphy now they look forward to uh, a couple of newcomers, guys who haven't been with us uh, on the singles uh, program before, Wayne Denon and Steve Plant, and of course that'll be in next week's semifinals. That'll be interesting because if they haven't appeared on the show, sometimes you get into a team where at least one of the bowls has appeared, and kind of calm the other fellow down. So it'll be interesting to see how that match develops with two brand new bowlers. And then of course in two weeks, Gary Carrington and Jack Ray sitting in that number one seated spot. They'll be trying to defend that spot as we uh, have our ladder championship match. That's in two weeks. So we hope to see you uh, next Sunday at one o'clock and of course at noon for our regular Stars and Strikes program. Two hours of candlepin bowling every week here on the Winds. Until next Sunday, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 Sports crew, Doug Brown. Bye-bye, everybody.